Hi, my name is Robert Griffin. I'm a research scientist with the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition um, and project lead for the Mobility Unlimited Challenge. So IHMC is a multidisciplinary research institute where we actually look into many different areas from natural language processing to human performance to also robotics. Historically, we've mainly focused on legged robots with a primary focus on bipedal robots. So robots that look and walk similar to a human but don't actually have an operator inside. But then around 12 years ago, we actually started this idea of what happens if you start having the human and the robot interface more directly in the form of a wearable robotic system. And that really brought us to the first iteration of our any wearable robot that we ever had, which was Mina V0. And Mina V0 was really basic, just had a couple different actuated joints on it. We weren't targeting any specific task, but it really kind of began this journey that has led us to where we are today with our wearable exoskeleton program. From there, we next developed the Mina V1 XO. That device was the first one that we had that was specifically targeting people who were paralyzed. We learned that there's a long way to go. We learned that you know you can't just expect a pre-recorded motion from an able-bodied person to be executed perfectly by someone who has no sensation or no motor control in their lower body. And we decided to really start investigating this heavily. That next led to our uh, pr program with NASA, uh, NASA Johnson Space Center. So we'd partnered with them previously on bipedal robots with one of our earliest ones that was M2V2. And we continued this relationship with the development of X1. And X1 was designed to help in people, both that were paralyzed, but also able-bodied people. And so the idea was that by sending up an exoskeleton, they can utilize a relatively small, compact device to provide resistance to their bodies. And that also, we continued that project with the next one development of the grasshopper, which was specifically targeting the idea of an exercise device via a wearable robot. One of the biggest takeaways from the Grasshopper was actually the actuator design, which we then used to build a new exoskeleton, the Mina V2, which we designed specifically to compete in the Cybathlon. And the, one of the, our biggest goals with Mina V2 was to make not only the walking more reliable and more stable, but also easier for the pilot. And to do that, we added this powered ankle joint. And we've kind of continued in this direction with the development of Quix. So Quix not only has a powered ankle, but also has a powered hip abduction adduction. And we really think that with these specifically powered degrees of freedom, two at the hip, one at the knee, and one at the ankle, that we're able to greatly minimize the amount of effort that our pilot or any user has to exert to actually utilize the device. One of the big things that we really focus on at IHMC is the human-centered design, and that's something that's been at the foundation of the entire research institute since its inception. And we've really taken that seriously with the design and manufacture of the exoskeleton. So having our pilot be an active part of the design and development process has been really critical. Mark has been, you know, essential to getting his feedback both during the software development process as well as the design of the device, and even to the point of helping us actually build the exoskeleton. My name is Mark Daniel. I am IHMC's exoskeleton pilot. I've been working with him since 2010. It was, it was really a new experience for me to have s m this much of a hands-on experience actually building the device. Unlike the previous devices that I've worked with at IHMC, the ease of training was, of course, visible, was of course visible on the first day, but it actually bled over into pretty much every practice session since then. We've worked in tandem through every step of the design process. All the small little details that I needed accounted for that are hard to relay while I'm testing the device or just hard to remember all at once were really implemented before we got to testing. So that whenever I took the first step, all the little minor details of, you know, ample momentum forward, crutch placement, all these things were discussed and really implemented in 
before that first step. So the first step went very well. And then subsequently, all the parameters are easy to adjust on the fly. So if I have an issue, I can talk directly with them, make that adjustment, and then we try that. And we can go backward if, it do, if that does not work. And it, it's been a nice flowing process. In 2010, when I was introduced to the idea of an exoskeleton, I thought that my dreams were really answered. Whenever I was paralyzed at 18 years old, the only thing that stopped me from going back to work was the inability to stand over a drill press. And when the idea of an exoskeleton was introduced, I saw myself getting up for work, strapping into this exoskeleton and going back to work. And that was in 2010. The day that I walked in and had to hang from the ceiling while they strapped it to me, I realized that we had a long way to go and that this device was far from perfect. <clears throat> I walked away the first day and not really, not really happy, but happy to see that we were moving towards something that could get me back on my feet. And each iteration has gotten closer and closer to the point at which I actually believe that I, I could go back to work that day. And now seeing quicks come together and actually being able to operate in the real world actually being able to stand over work and use my hands while I stand there brings home the idea that one day there will be an 18 year old kid that I once was who will get paralyzed and he will be given this device and he'll go back to work the way that he always knew and something that I lack I lack the vocabulary and the time to sit here and explain to you the vastness of what you lose when you lose that and for me to see today that it is something that we can accomplish gives me hope after 13 years. I can only imagine what that'll do for somebody who just got injured.